Hello class, so we are now on to 1.6. So this is the surface area and volume of spheres. So the nice part about spheres and hemispheres, so what a hemisphere is, is simply just a sphere cut in half, okay? So you can see this is a hemisphere, okay? It's just a sphere cut in half. The surface area and volume of these guys is not super difficult. Um, and that's why it's kind of jumbled into one little section here. So you have the surface area of a sphere, it's just this really easy formula for pi r squared, where r is the radius. Okay, the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, recognize there's a cube there. Also note that this is on your formula sheet, okay, and you actually have your sphere and your hemisphere. Okay, 4 pi r squared for the surface area, for your sphere, there is your volume for the sphere. Remember the hemisphere is simply the, the guy cut in half, okay, just like that. Now, there's a few other things to it, but that is the general information that you're going to need to know. To uh, And of course, these examples aren't going to go through every single type of example you'll see. There are going to be tougher examples, and that's where you need to be coming in and asking for harder questions, um, doing lots of practice problems because that's where you're going to find those harder questions, okay? So let's do this. Determine the surface area and volume of a sphere with a diameter of 40 centimeters. So let's first focus on this side, the surface area. First, let's try and draw a sphere. It's going to look pretty bad. It's kind of hard to draw a sphere because it's a 3D object. How did they do it? Okay, they just do a little dotted line showing that it's going all the way around. So we'll do the same thing. So there's our sphere, and we have a radius. They gave us a diameter, so that's all the way across of 40 centimeters. Remember that a radius is half of that. Okay, the radius is half of that. We know what the half of 40 is. So your radius would be 40 divided by two. That's gonna give us 20 centimeters, okay? So here we have radius equaling 20 centimeters, okay? Now, for your surface area, the surface area of the sphere, let's go find that equation. We're talking about a sphere, there's your surface area, four pi r squared. So let's write that out, four pi r squared, perfect. And now all we have to do is plug in our value and solve for the surface area. So four pi, what was r? r was 20, 20 centimeters squared. And we're gonna plug that into our calculator. So remember, I <clears throat> you gotta learn how to utilize brackets. So bracket four, okay, I'm multiplying four. How do I get to pi? Well, pi is found as a yellow Okay, so you gotta press the yellow button and then press pi. So there's four pi there. And then r squared, remember it's 20. So I'm gonna bracket this, 20, and there's your square button, squared. So four pi 20 squared, and that gives us 5,026. I'm gonna round it to the nearest square unit, so 5,027. Okay, I'm rounding this six up to a seven because the number to the right of it is greater than five or five or greater. So I'm gonna round this up to 5,027. And what are the units? Well, we're dealing with area. Area is measured in squared units. So this is centimeters squared. So there's your surface area. Now, how do we do our volume? Well, find the volume so a sphere, there's your volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So our volume here is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now, where is our radius? Well, it's 20. So we just simply plug this into our calculator. And remember, you need to have proper calculator etiquette. What does that mean? You have to plug this in properly into your calculator in order to get the proper solution. So how do I plug this in? Remember this, every time you see a fraction, you got to bracket that out. So bracket 4 over 3, 4 divided by 3, 
I'm going to grab the pi there, so I'm going to bracket my pi. It's in yellow, so I need to press the second button, pi. Okay, and then 20, I'm going to bracket this. Now the big question is, how do I get that cube? I'm not squaring it this time, I'm cubing it. Well, this is to the power of. That's what this little button does. Any num If you press this, now any number you prep pus put there, it's 20 to the power of whatever that number is. So this time it's to the power of 3. So that's how you would plug that in, 20 to the power of 3. And that gives us 33,510. I'm going to leave it as a 0 here because this number is less than 5. So you don't round this up. So this gives me 33,510. And what's the units? Area is measured in squared units. Volume is measured in cubed units. And there you have it. There's your volume of the sphere. Awesome. Okay. Let's look at example two here. So determine the surface area and volume of the hemisphere. Okay. So determine the surface area and volume of the hemisphere. Well, in this case, remember, this is half of our sphere. So it's not super different. We do have our hemisphere equations here. 3 pi r squared, 2 thirds pi r cubed. So here, the surface area is 3 pi r squared. Okay, so there's our 3 pi r squared. Our r is 6, so this is not a super difficult question. We just need to know how to plug it into our calculator. And again, we should be pretty fluent at that. Make sure we use our brackets. So 3 second pi, r is 6, so I'm going to bracket it, 6 squared. So you should have it looking like this, 3 times pi times 6 squared, which gives me 339. I'm going to round it to the tenth this time. So since my 9, my number beside 2, is greater than 5, I'm going to round that up to a 3. So 339.3. And this is measured in centimeters squared because it is surface area. Awesome. Now our volume. What's the volume of a hemisphere? The volume of your hemisphere is 2 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so it's found right here, 2 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so how do we plug all this into our calculator? Well, we have our radius, it's six. So two thirds pi, six centimeters cubed, okay? And from there, we can plug this in. I'm gonna bracket my two thirds in my calculator, I'm gonna bracket my pi, and then I'm gonna bracket all of this. So how do we plug this in? As you can see, I have bracketed my two thirds, okay? My pi, remember, second, get the yellow pi, pi. Should. And then six cubes. So remember, how do I get to a cube? Press six, and now we want to the power of, and any number here is to the power of, and we're gonna press three and bracket that off. So now we have 6 to the power of 3. And that gives us 452 point, and we're going to round this to the 10th. This number is 5 or greater, so we're going to round this up to 4. 453, or sorry, 400 and 452.4, 4, and this is a volume, so it's measured in cubed units. Okay. So remember, if you if you find yourself confused, copy it down, rewatch the solution, come ask questions if you need. Okay. So if the volume of a sphere is a hundred centimeters cubed, 
determine the diameter of the sphere. So we're talking about a sphere. So it's always good to draw a circle. Or remember, try and make these questions smaller. Draw pictures, notate it. So like here, I'm going to actually just put the volume down here so I don't have to think too hard. So I know the volume of this is 100 centimeters cubed. They're trying to find the diameter. So that's all the way across. Now remember, they're going to give you useful information. They're giving us volume. So let's go to the volume formula of a sphere and see if we can use that. So the volume equation for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So let's see. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay. Now at this point, 4 thirds pi r cubed, remember diameter and radius are related. If we can solve for the radius, we can simply find the diameter by multiplying 2 times the radius. We have volume, so we can solve for this. So 100 centimeters cubed equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now we can start solving for the radius. How do we do that? Well, let's simplify these two things. Let's multiply those numbers together to make it one number. Remember, bracket off your 4 thirds. Bracket off your 4 thirds. And then second pi. Okay, and we get 4.18879. So I'm going to go all the way to 9 here. So this is 100 centimeters cubed. And this is giving me 4.18879 r cubed. Okay, and now you need to get rid of the numbers first and then deal with the exponent, which is the thing at the top. Okay, so how do we deal with that? I'm going to divide 4.18879 first, and then divide 4.18879 after that. Okay, so that cancels out. And that's going to give us 100, 100 divided by 4.18879. That gives us 23.87. So I'm going to round this all the way up to the 4 here. So 23.873242 equals r cubed. Now, how the heck do we get rid of that cubed? When it was squared, we simply just square rooted, but that's not quite as simple. So the way to cube root to get rid of this cube is we're gonna cube root both sides, such as this, okay? So we're gonna cube root both sides. Now, when you cube root both sides, how do I do that in my calculator? Well, what you're going to press is math and see here, that's cube rooted. So you can either go down to four or you can just press four here. And now you have a cube root of 23.873242. I'm going to bracket that off, and I'm going to solve for r. So we want to round it. I don't know if it told us to round it. Well, we don't want to round it yet because we're actually solving for diameter. Okay, so we solved for the radius. We need to solve for the diameter. So here is 2.8794 equaling the radius. And what is the units? Remember, this is just a, a length, so this is in centimeters. So there's our radius. Now the last thing we gotta do is multiply our radius by two to get the diameter. So diameter equals two multiplying 2.8794 centimeters. And that's gonna give us, with your calculator, you can actually just press times. Remember this answer is what the last number you found. Multiply that by two 
and that's five point, I'm gonna round it to the thousandth, okay? So I'm gonna put 5.76. I'm rounding this up to six because the number beside it is five or greater, so 5.76. And that's centimeters, so I've rounded it to the thousandth, okay? So that was example three. Lots of new stuff here, how to cube root something. You gotta come and ask questions if you don't understand how to cube root something. All right, this is our final question. So here we go. Example four. A balloon is needed for Mr. Skaver's birthday. He's setting up his own birthday party because I am I have no friends, apparently. I'm setting up my own birthday party and I need to inflate the ball. This should actually say balloon. Okay, so and I need to inflate this balloon. My lungs fill the balloon up at a rate of 2,000 centimeters cubed per breath to a diameter of 25 centimeters. How many pumps are needed to inflate the ball? Okay, so the first thing we want to figure out is we need to get this to the balloon. Our goal is to get it where it has a diameter. So remember, always draw pictures. We're trying to get it to where we have a balloon that has a diameter of 25 centimeters. So this is a humongous balloon, okay? So this equals diameter. We have a rate here. This is from section 1.3 and 1.1. We can show this as a ratio. This is 2,000 centimeters cubed per one breath, okay? If we want to figure out the amount of breaths, so pumps, that actually should say breaths, my goodness. If we want to figure out how many breaths I need, we need to figure out what the volume we are trying to get to and determine how many breaths that's going to take. So this is a two, this is a more div, uh, this is kind of a difficult question you might see. So first, we want it to be we want the balloon to get to 25 centimeters in diameter. That means we can figure out what volume we want the balloon at. What's the volume of a sphere? That's what a balloon is. It's pretty much a sphere. So it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume here is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, now we have 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, well, what do we do here? Okay. Um, we need to figure out what the radius is. Well, we have the diameter. Remember, the radius is simply the diameter divided by 2. Okay, it's just half of it. So what's 25 centimeters divided by 2? That's 12.5 centimeters. So now we have radius, so we can figure out the volume, our goal volume, by plugging this in. So our radius is 12.5 centimeters cubed. So here, if we want to plug this in, oh, sorry about that, brackets 4 thirds, remember we want to get pi, it's in the yellow, so press the yellow button, pi, okay, and 12.5, and remember, how, how do you cube something? So you can either press the power button to the power of three. I'll show you one other method. You can press math and you can simply go down to here. This is cubing something. So you could press three. And now you have 12.5 cubed. So there's two different ways to cube in your calculator. Recognize we've bracketed everything. We gotta use our brackets to, our, um, to its potential here. So I'm gonna just take this number here, eight, 8,181. So this is 8,181 centimeters cubed because it's a volume measurement. Now, we have our goal volume. Goal volume. What we want to know is how many breaths will this take? How many breaths? Well, that's where this ratio comes in. 
our, if our volume goes on the top, we can solve for the breath. So in this case, we're dealing with 8,181 centimeters cubed. We're trying to determine how many breaths that's going to take. And from here, we can cross multiply and divide. So let's do that. So remember, cross multiplication, you multiply the two numbers across from each other. 8,181 centimeters cubed multiplied by one breath. I'm just going to put BR divided by 2,000, so the odd number out. And if we plug that in, it takes about 4.0905 breaths. Now, we can't really do a, f well, we could technically do a fraction of a breath. So I'm going to round this down. That's not very large. I'm just going to round this down to four breaths. Our balloon might be a little bit less deflated than we wanted it to. But if we go to five, we risk it popping because it's so much bigger than 4.09. Okay, so always try and make these sentences into easier understandable diagrams. Um, simply just stating what your radius is and try and find useful ratios that you can use. Now you should be good to go and attempt your AFL 1.6, okay? So please go try AFL 1.6. If any of these confused you, please rewatch that specific example. Make sure you're really understanding how to solve for variables like example three. Um, how to find ratios, and if anything's confusing you, please watch the video, take the notes, and come in and see me for some help. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Ask questions.